Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the analyst desk. My name is Ivar. Join my co-analyst uh, here. Um, Samakram. Thoughts yeah. of the game, Sam? <sighs> that was uh, really a completely different game than we saw in the first round. Round one was a bloodbath, and <laughs> round two, uh, pretty quiet. It was pretty quiet for the first ten minutes of play. Uh, it was with, it was that attempt to dive from the rumble that really started things off. Yeah, uh, uh, there's a solo kill at the 11 minutes, the attempt to dive from the rumble, and then um, he lost his flash there and he was punished again by misclicked on the on the J4, um, and they got another kill uh, in the top side of the map. But besides that, it was a really uh, calculated early game from both sides. Nobody was really doing any crazy fighting. Uh, the next thing I think we wanted to touch on was the... Uh, Light in your dragon pit around 20 minutes, I think. Um, the one with the, the, bu the bullet time, right? Yes, the bullet time yeah. equalizer. Um, wait, 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 it was not the herald. Oh, herald, yes, you're correct. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. think we were we were touching on the fact of the anti-synergy with the J4 a little bit. Um, where... The J4 enabled Osaito's comp, or... Correct, correct. So the J4, like, he needs to hit that cataclysm, and sometimes you don't get rid of the cataclysm instantly because you want to keep... The members uh, of the opposing team like locked up, but that uh, allows the bullet time and the equalizer to you know to do its uh, damage over time and win a team fight like exactly like we saw there. Yeah, I think the problem that Osaito's had is, and I mentioned this when we were watching the game, is that there is very few winning scenarios. There's only one winning scenario for Osaito's team comp, and that is you have to pray that Glacial mess up. And we saw that at the Rift Herald, where Glacial Galaxy just dogpiled um, front to back, trying to fight through the bullet time equalizer combo and getting melted. Um, and props to Glacial Galaxy, they took a step back, they re um, they reconfigured how they wanted to play fights, and it was a pretty convincing win after that. They controlled the game very well, and they closed it out efficiently. And so... Yeah, I know Glacial... you wanted to touch on the itemization a little bit, right? Oh um, yeah, yeah. The some of... yeah. Yeah, the the rumble the rumble build was a little questionable. The Leandris I mean, uh, that, that, yeah, that did... uh, the Leandris makes sense, but uh, yeah. I I think um like traditionally I guess the Leandris rally is what you go, but I think an audible needed to be called here for a Morello second because of the hit healing. Yeah, you have Bramble Vest, but Bramble Vest is not very efficient because very few of the enemy champions on Glacial's comp are actually auto attacking. And there's mm -hmm. no guarantee they're hitting uh, the Volley Bear at all. So a third source of Grievous Wounds would have been critical. Not to mention Rylos is just not an efficient item on Rumble. He already has plenty of slows in his kit. You're already maximizing the Leandries in your mm -hmm. um, inventory. So there's no need for the Rylos. It's, it's a wasted item. I don't, think it, it, I don't think it affects the outcome of the game. I think it's just too difficult. Too many things have to go well that are outside of Osiris' uh, sphere of influence, that there's really no way they can win the game if Glacial yeah. Galaxy play intelligently like they did after that Herald fight. Yeah, and uh, we're, I think we're ready for the finals here. We're going to have um, a really, really hype matchup. Uh, I believe they met in the finals in week two and three of Light Week, uh, Lightweight. Excuse me. Um, we have uh, FSU Black taking on Glacial Galaxy, who we just saw on stream. Um, we were looking at their previous games today, and FSU Black played the exact same comp twice. So I, I don't think they're going to be able to get the exact same comp because mm -hmm. they are on red side instead of blue side this time. But it's yeah. going to be pretty interesting if uh, Glacial can, you know, pinpoint that and ban out some some of those champions. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The same comp back to back, and I don't think the red side giving them red sides really what changes this. It's the fact that hopefully Glacial Galaxy sees hey, FSU won with the same comp twice. Maybe let's not give them all the pieces to let them do that again. Yep, and uh, I think the stream is set up here. We are going to send it over to our beautiful casters, Rude Dude and Jake, uh, and we will be back at that on Analyst Desk after this finals. So stick around. 
Thank you very much, Ivar and Simulcrum. That was amazing breakdown. We are starting up our third and final game of the night. This is actually insanely hype. And here's the reason why, as they pointed out, not only is this the multiple times that these teams have faced off, each, uh, off against each other, but they have proven to be two of the most dominant teams not just this week, but over the last three weeks as well. And both teams have massive organizational support behind them. Both of these teams have a huge number of fans that come out to cheer their players on. The Jod Rant has an entire religion that is starting to follow him. I don't want to go so far as to say it's a cult, but it might be getting a little bit close to a cult. That, that, that's all I'm saying. And Glacial Galaxy, the entire Glacial organization have been absolutely massive as well. So this this is the time to let us know your voices in the Twitch chat. It's game three. Pro Draft has started. I'm Jake Kelton, joined by Rude Dude once again. And we are already through the ban phase. Echo, Sejuani, and Zack being taken away by Glacial Galaxy. Pinching off a lot of these strong, tanky junglers as well as some engaged tools as FSU Black have something similar in mind with the Jarvan, the Alawi, and what is their final ban? Is it going to be something the Glacial Galaxy actually played in the last game? It is the Soraka coming through. Yeah, so FSU Black taking away the Jarvan and Soraka from the last game. Glacial Galaxy taking away the Zac and the Sejuani, which was played by FSU Black in their previous two games. They also take the Ezreal for themselves, which is something that I think FSU Black are going to be more than happy with because they've played Ash into Ezreal at least the last game. They're going to likely trade it here as well, yep, with that hover all but, all but confirms it and there it is locked in. They're going to be happy with this trade of ADCs. They've played Ash into Ezreal, if not two games, at least the one that got them into this final. Likely going to be rounding out their comp with, I would assume, some melee-style engaged support. They played the nice. Braum last time. Ah, Braum. There we go. Brom gets taken for them there and now Glacial Galaxy have the option to uh, pick up themselves their bot lane counterpart. We saw last game that we had Firing Fox on the Soraka, not going to have that option for themselves this time. We'll be trying to take a Thresh actually, you know, a more different pace for Firing Fox. Something a little bit more aggressive, has a little bit more agency to it and can really set up the team here on this pick. And a little bit more, as you said, yeah, that pick coming through with a pick of Thresh. And the ability to say, hey, Ash, you have to stand still when you're casting a lot of your spells. She's not the most mobile of champions. She doesn't have any innate escapes built into her. As long as Braum is not there with that unbreakable wall to block that death sentence coming through, it's going to make it very easy to be able to catch out this ADC. And then you add on top of that CC chain. Why not? It's been the theme of the entire evening. Bring a Morgana in as well. Now, that does still say that Glacial Galaxy could run some hyper-aggressive oh. jungler, like an Olaf or something, who doesn't care about the enemy team's crowd control, and will just run through with the Black Shield of Morgana. So you'll start to see some of the bands from FSU Black echo those champions that are divers that a Black Shield will be strong on. Chat was asking for it. The Zed comes out for the Jod Ran. It didn't... Uh, I think he has not played it yet on stream, it's or maybe he's played it once before, but... Oh, it's a Karthus pick. Oh, are they are they are they trolling us? There's no way that that just happened to have traded from a Karthus to a Zed. We are getting from the client confirmed that it is a Karthus pick, not a Zed. We all got excited about the Zed, but it's Karthus that came through. I was I was really hoping for a Zed. Not only would it have been piloted by the Jodran here, it would have also been a really nice counter into the Morgana. And I I don't want to say that this. Uh, that Zed can't still be locked in because Zed into Morgana is a really easy matchup for the Zed, provided that you play around the Morgana's cooldowns. Obviously, Morgana has a magical damage shield and Zed doesn't really deal any magical damage with these zero AP ratios. Does have the the passive proc, but other than that, it's you know nothing to um, nothing to write home about. And this Morgana pick is actually something that I'm not surprised to see from Neptune. We saw last game she went for. A Zyra pick, you know, this AP support style that they take into the mid lane. And Morgana, very similar to that, is going to be able to take a W. Uh, just pushes the wave really easily. And I believe with that Karthus being locked in, that we mean that a Zed ban has actually come out on the side of the yeah. Galaxy here. <laughs> So let's run through this, all right? Keep in mind, this is going to be really scuffed. It is a lot of fun. So Zed, as a pick for FSU Black, is actually a Karthus. 
The Karthus band from Glacial Galaxy is actually a Trundle, and the red band from FSU Black is a Zed. So, or no, the, the Karthus band is a Zed band, and then the red band is a Trundle band. So just as long as everyone is aware, Zed is banned, Trundle is banned, Karthus is picked, they're good enough. Pro Draft, you're so much fun, we love it. Gangplank comes through, we are not gotten anything saying the Gangplank is an incorrect champion, so we're gonna assume for now that it's Gangplank, Karthus, Braum, Ash for FSU Black, give themselves a strong side laner, give themselves a strong, probably jungler is what I'm expecting that Karthus to come in, which means there is still the possibility of a mid laner coming through for FSU Black, or Karthus could swap to that mid lane, but there is no Zed. It was banned by Glacial Galaxy. Yeah, and a really nice, stable blind pick for FSU Black on the top side. Gangplank, something that can scale really well into late, late, into late game, will be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Leap on this Dr. Mundo again. And now Glacial Galaxy have to blind pick their jungle or oh, their jungle here i forgot they've already got their mid lane locks in that's up completely on me but they are going to opt for a shaco here in the grand finals of the lightweight july testing here that's so exciting it's the invitational finals best of one and you grab yourself a shaco looking for those assassinations trying to shut down this ash i don't know how it's going to work too well into a gangplank but a karthus is also very good at being able to be shut down by a shaco who pops up out of nowhere quickly assassinates you, and then disappears back into the dark jungle. Shen coming through as the final pick from FSU Black. Seems like everything has gone at least straight to form for the last couple of picks, so we'll assume that those are kept. I'm Leap had a monstrous Mundo in game number two, so we'll see how Armin 546's Shen can get a face off against him. We are ready for the client picks and bans, and we should be able to sort out a little bit of the... Uh, fun, enjoyable pro draft shenanigans that do occur here in just a moment. But I'm just so, so hyped for this because both these teams have time and time again proven how incredibly powerful that they are against other teams. And now we get to see them face off yet again with some very, very fascinating compositions. Yeah, this Shaco pick is actually something that is really exciting to me because you talked about it just then that the assassination potential onto this Ash is going to be huge and besides this assassin shaco i didn't really see a way that glacial galaxy would be able to get to the back line to harm this ash this shaco and this is very rare that you'll hear me say this shaco is a really strong pick here if it's going to be piloted correctly he was able to find the lack in vision able to get on top of the ash the ash really won't have that many escapes get free he was able to use the clone to dodge the ultimate likely going to see ash take exhaust this game just to keep herself safe should she get jumped on and what this also means for FSU Black is that they're actually running Gangplank in the mid lane. And I'm going to talk about this quickly, that Gangplank versus Morgana mid lane is going to be a thoroughly unentertaining matchup to watch. What the laners are going to do, Morgana's going to reach level 5 and she's going to have 3 points in W. She's going to press her W on the wave. She's going to clear the back line and last hit the 3 melee minions. Gangplank's going to receive the wave, Gangplank's going to farm the wave, and they're going to handshake and just trade farm back and forth until their teams do something for themselves. Morgana doesn't really have any kill pressure onto the Gangplank with Gangplank having orange. Gangplank doesn't really have any kill pressure on the Morgana with the Morgana having the spell shield to block the sh block the slows from the <laughs> barrels. So mid lane is just is just going to be an absolute farm fest. I love it. But yeah, so so John Ram with all those barrels should just be punishing this Morgana over and over again. And the b favorite thing about it is that uh, it's a super safe lane. Okay, look at the members of Geisha Galaxy. Ezreal Thresh. They're going to be focused so heavily in the bottom lane trying to deal with Ash and Brom. It's unlikely Flaring Fox is going to rotate mid all that often. Even if he does, it's a gangplank. As you mentioned, eats oranges, gets out of CC, he's okay. And as well as that Morgana. So you're going to either have to have the perfect lineup of crowd control or you're just never going to be able to catch out this gangplank he can push to his heart's desire back recall by repeat do that over and over again and in that mid lane post six he's prime position to be able to drop that ultimate top lane to help a karthus and shen take down i'm leaps mundo or in the bottom lane to pair with the ash and Chan crystal arrow the brom glacial fissure and with that ultimate slow down the members of ezreal and thresh make it much easier for the side of FSU Black to pick up kills. While we rarely ever see a Gangplank mid lane, I absolutely dig it for this composition. Yeah, so do I. It's something that's just going to add to the comp even more. Just raw teamfight power. 
coming out from the mid lane. And with the AP Karthus in the jungle, they aren't lacking for magical damage, meaning that Mundo's able to spec into one uh, one defensive route like that we'd seen in the last game where they really just needed a needed a Spirit Visage and then Leap was able to take over the game. We've now got much more mixed damage coming through onto the opposition. FSU Black forcing Leap into needing a at least Sunfire Cape, likely going to need another armor item as well to keep himself safe and then on top of that have to take the Spirit Visage as well just to amplify his healing as well. Exactly. So we have ourselves a little bit of time to introduce both teams. We've already seen Glacial Galaxy, but let's run through their picks this time around. Run through FSU Black, and then we'll have plenty of time to break down the compositions in a little bit more detail. Maybe kind of go through lane by lane, talking about which uh, side should have a bit more priority. So I'm Leap, still piloting that Mundo in the top lane, but this time versus the Shen. Miss Click taking the Shaco into the jungle. Neptune on Morgana. Aqua Domain with Ezreal in that bottom lane, pairing with the three. Fresh, piloted by the Flaring Fox. Yep, and on the side of FSU Black, we've got Armin 546 on the top side piloting Shen. Swag Gasm 6969 in the jungle playing Karthus. The one, the only, the Jodran in the mid lane playing Gangplank. And then Nihilator and Viathan GWC on the Braum playing the Freljordian duo down bot Ash Braum for themselves. You got there the Viathan. Go. I wonder if it was so nicely done. It's just, it's one of those weird ones when you first look at it, you're like, what? And then you kind of cut out the le I mean, Leviathan and you get just Viathan. So beautifully done. But yeah, exactly uh, what you were saying before with the healing that's coming through from FSU Black, um, the healing that Glacial Galaxy has with the Mundo in the top lane, it's going to you know, kind of question mark a little bit on the priorities and build once again because you don't have as much healing as Glacial Galaxy had previously with the Soraka. So Ash may not be so concerned about picking up uh, anything with Grievous Wounds, but instead more focusing on just building straight damage to be able to actually shut down people once they get caught out from the Brom or the Gangplank. But I really want to kind of narrow in and focus on where it is that these junglers are going to prioritize because post six is where their true power comes online. But even pre six, Karthus with that wall of pain or Shaco with a really well placed box can be a terrible harassment for anyone in lane. Yeah, and it's really going to be these junglers farming their way up to level six because even Shaco in the early game doesn't really have the uh, the level of impact that a Lee Sin, for example, would do. Doesn't have that potential to get really strong, potent ganks off. Obviously, does have a stealth. So if there's a really overextended lane anywhere, will have the potential to find a gank. And as you mentioned, the box is going to be useful in certain niche scenarios. So I have to wait and see whether or not any of those present themselves to misclicked, but. I feel like once this game goes into the later stages, the burden of execution really does become all on this Shaco pick. It's something that we don't see too often anywhere in the world, and it is something that we're going to have to see if it can be piloted well or not, because if the Shaco finds some success and is able to take out Nihilator, then we're going to see great successes coming through for Galaxy, because this Ash is one of three really strong damage dealers into this later stage. And if that Ash does fall, it's going to open up a world of pain in FSU Black's backline. Well, also keep in mind, Misclick did a really good job of punishing and shutting down the jungler from last game as well when they were playing up against Osida. So I wouldn't be surprised if a early Shaco decided to try to shut down the Karthus. Because Karthus, keep in mind, A, does not have that much health and has practically no healing in the early game jungle. So can absolutely be devastated with a bursty champion like the Shaco. That's why you see sometimes Graves coming out playing up against the Karthus because he's got a lot of early burst damage so we'll see how much glacial galaxy wants to invest in their jungler doing invades or if it's all about that power farming to hit the level six and to start those ganks in the lanes we are going to take a very quick break or we're just going to uh, pause our casting for a moment as we are loading onto summoner's rift we'll be right back once we are into summoner's rift hopefully no dcs hopefully we can launch straight into game and talk about the amazing players that we have before us we'll be right back
10 minute pause, no 20 minute waiting period. We are straight onto Summoner's Rift for this game number three. Glacial Galaxy taking on FSU Black. It's finals, baby. It's best of one. It's do or die for these teams for the $25 prize pool. In the Twitch chat, they know that both of these organizations have a lot of support, so let's hear it. Hashtag FSU win or hashtag GE win. There's one or another. Let us know which one it is that you support and think are going to come out with this victory. Yeah, and with that said and done, you know, these guys have fought their way through the bracket to get themselves here. And this could be an early catch on to Swaggasm here. He's just going to walk away after tanking two cleavers, but Neptune not going to go much further little invade on this top side i'm really happy to see this you know they're already focusing this carthus and now that minions have spawned if he goes for a base here he's going to be severely delayed in his clear and i'm really not relenting here <laughs> i love it he's like look i i know that you're super squishy early game and uh, my cleavers don't really hurt me as long as i'm hitting you and he's been on top of a lot of these cleavers very warmed up from last game already taking karthus down to about two-thirds health so swag has him gonna have a little bit of a rougher time in the jungle than maybe normally with full health starts but at least he's got the help of armin to grab this red buff for himself yeah, and what this is likely going to mean is that Swaggasm either has to use a double smite clear, which means that he'll have less priority on the crabs, or he won't be able to full clear, which is something that Karthus typically does want to do. So, the, as much as these are just, you know, little cleavers throwing themselves back and forth, I actually could have some pretty serious ramifications as we accelerate ourselves to the sort of five or six minute mark, where we see uh, the, the smites coming through and being more useful, and already we see... see the golems have been left by Swaggasm. He's not going to be able to get all of his camps and his first initial clear. Yeah, afraid of losing his blue buff to the Shaker, who is farming on the bottom red side and grabbing those Krugs for himself. So you can definitely tell Swaggasm was a little bit concerned about losing his bottom side jungle, but he's already down there picking that up, so should feel good and should be in position to grab the Scuttle Crab once it actually shows up in that river. So a little bit of uh, safety vision if they're going to be prioritizing the bottom side Drake. And I got to say, if I'm either of these teams, I would rather be FS you black when it comes to trying to fight for the drake not only because you have an easier time slipping in and out but i would rather take a gangplank pushing out mid lane and then coming to help fight at drake than a morgana who literally is only going to have that dark binding to try to be of assistance fighting for the drake yeah you're exactly right and i'm just keeping a track on this jungle matchup here misclicked has found swaggasm in his jungle but misclicked his two camps behind right now and a collapse from the bot side could be dangerous Yep, yeah, and uh, misclicked, invisible for the moment, is able to join the team as Flaring Fox and Aqua moved up to help protect the Shaco, but uh, they're still going to try to initiate going forward. Death Sense going to land on Braum. Keep in mind, most of the people in this fight are level 2, level 3, so there isn't actually all that much in their tanks when it comes to damage sources. The Shaco goes in, steals it with the smite, but it might be in a bit of trouble. Unfortunately, Viatha not quite in range to land an auto attack and didn't want to burn the Q. So a good little steal there from misclicked after a strong investment for fighting on that bottom side river and it's exactly as i mentioned earlier on with the early poke coming out from i'm leap on the top side he's inadvertently just won him won his jungle at that crab because of all of the fighting that he got earlier on swaggasm had to burn two smites while two smites whilst clearing his camps meaning he didn't have smite available in order to secure that crab and with that misclicked jumps on in isn't actually punished the way I believe that he should have been. You know, unfortunately, no auto attack came through from Viathan to apply the Braum passive. But either way, Shaco on this top side picked, or on the bot side rather, picked up the crab, stole it away with the smite available, has his full camp on the full clear on the top side to take. And also, looks like we've seen a lane swap engaged from Neptune and Leap right here. They're going to swap their lanes and give the Morgana the farm up on the top side, maybe feeling a little bit rough in the mid lane matchup. 
Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and swap them for now, hopefully, or if it lasts for a really long time. If it doesn't, I'll swap them back, but we do want to kind of keep our eyes on how the farm is between the Mundo and the Gangplank over the next couple of minutes, especially with that rotation. The Mundo is a little bit behind the curve, uh, and I want to kind of see how he pairs up against the Jodran as he's pushing a massive wave underneath this turret. Really wants to shove I'm Leap back enough that he's not going to be able to just pick up all this farm because he should easily catch back up but it seems like Shadran's more focused on recalling picking up his first items of the game sitting on that 1000 gold so might grab that sheen for himself yeah gonna look to go back soon as he can he's probably gonna push in a couple more waves here leap really has to take a recall here because he is so low and Jodran is gonna hit six off of these next three minions if he stays around and with that, along with his flash, he's definitely got kill pressure. You know, Cannon Barrage comes down and a flash Q come through. Could definitely spell the end of Leap here with this low HP that he's on. And I'm actually going to just touch a little bit more on this jungle because the Shaco pick is really what's going to decide this game for me, at least. Because if it's able to get some effectiveness, able to pick out these champions, you know, I've said it again and again that gambling on this Shaco pick is something that they are going to have to do. As we see a little... Gank in the mid lane not really amounting to too much, but he's been able to get himself in and out of the Carthus' jungle a little bit early on, taking away some of the smaller golems, definitely making himself felt and known inside Carthus' jungle. He needs to continue to do that, continue to apply the pressure to get himself a little bit of an advantage earlier on in this game. Oh, Thresh throwing in the Lantern, just forcing the members of SU back, Black to back up because they actually didn't have anyone in that bush. It was all just a bait to make them think that there was somebody and hopefully get a bit of a recall. I do like Aqua Domain grabbing this tier early in this bottom lane because it's not going to be one of those Ezreals that is much slower to stack up. He's instead saying, hey, I want to grab this Man Immune as early as possible. So goes ahead and gets himself that tier. Death Sentence going to land only kind of CCing the Braum for a little bit, but the Unbreakable saying, hey, not really taking any damage here. Nihilator still stepping forward. They've stacked up a couple of stuns on a Flaring Fox. One more would be able to potentially spell death, but happy just to grab that extra farm. And keep in mind, Nihilator did grab a Cole to start this game off with, so is stacking that up for that mid-game later. Yeah, and the reason that ADCs, we've started seeing ADCs starting cult a lot more often right now, and it's because um, the recent buff to AD carries, meaning they got a lot more base HP, I think Flying Fox is going to go down here. Look at the overaggression. Yeah, Nihilator is ignited though, so Brom immediately kind of backing away, but the Thresh already going down. Shaco's got some damage. And only level 5 though, no ultimate available. Nihilator forcing the flash out of Aqua Domain. They're chasing forward. Ultimate from Gangplank, just getting themselves those flashes. I also missed as well. Misclick, no flash on this Shaco. It's Smite and Ignite. So really hoping for that hyper aggression is Swag, guys. I'm going to start up the Ocean Drake for FSU Black. Yeah, they're going to take this Ocean Drake right here, I believe. And Misclicked is looking to go in and trying to get a kill back. And did Ooh. steal it away. And the Ezra with a true shot barrage picks up two. Nihilator is going to be likely to follow as well. One more cleaver for should do it from I'm Leap. Can he time it correctly with the Blast Cone? He cannot. But what a turnaround from Glacial Galaxy. Picking up two kills and the Ocean Drake. Thanks for the leash. Wow, misclicked on this Shaco. Really showing some proficiency right there. The backs of uh, the twin shiv poison coming out the E from Shaco. Execute damage in combination with the smite. And the swaggasm didn't stand too much of a chance. Unable to spike it with one of those lay wastes to secure the dragon for himself. And a beautiful true shot barrage came through. Managed to take down two low health members in that pit. And you know, you talked about this tier on the Ezreal. That's now already a man immune at nine minutes into this game. Oh, that's going to be so painful. He's even foregone those early boots just to be able to stack up even more damage. And you look over to the Ash and you say, hey, she's got a 50 stacked cull. So that's going to take a while before still coming online. And after that recall, only has the Bilgewater Cutlass and some daggers. Still no boots as well. One death sentence from the Thresh could spell the end of it for Annihilator in this bottom lane. Ooh, that, that sentence is actually pretty close, but no Caster Curse there just yet. 
Yeah, and these Qs from Aqua Domain really are going to start hurting. The AD that comes from Man Immune is actually so impactful. It, feel, it feels like you're getting hit by a Sheen proc when you get hit by one of these. And, you know, Sheen hasn't even been built by Aqua Domain yet. So once he gets that 1050 gold and is able to base, these Qs are really going to start spiking and start hurting so much. And the good thing is, Nihilate has got himself the Bilgewater Cutlass already. So this poke under the turret that he received from Aqua Domain really doesn't mean too much. We're really looking to see if Flaring Fox can get a hook and land an all in onto Annihilator for any of this damage to really stick for it to take just due to the lifesteal coming through from the itemization of the Ash. Yep, and uh, how long it's going to take for Ash to actually complete those items because so far it seems like it's going to be at least another couple of minutes and we actually surprisingly are at the 10 minute mark without any of these turrets really losing all that much. It's a single plate in the bottom side that FSU Black have lost uh, uh, on that turret and two plates in the top side as well so not all that much as Tombs goes on a hydrate spree. Thank you. I just finished grabbing a little bit of water myself but greatly appreciate it. It's time to take a shower says tomb so i'm gonna be enjoying that one in a little bit rift herald is up and available warded by fsu black but they've not decided to grab it just yet continuing to play out these lanes trying to continue to snowball farm credit to i'm leaps mundo for actually taking a cs lead over jodran in this mid lane yeah exactly and you know at the minute glacial esports are kind of just they're, they're getting leads in most of their lanes obviously Ash versus Ezreal, both of them are pretty happy just farming up, but Neptune on this top side has actually been able to an amount a nice 30 CS lead for herself on this Morgana in the top side of the map. Mid lane as well as you alluded to, got himself a little CS lead there. See a little jump in from Viathan, doesn't amount to too much, manages to unbreakable and walk himself away. Ooh. Oh, and then Chant Crystal Arrow. Okay, whoop, I'm missing following it because it's flying all the way up here. Should be able to hit the Shaco, locking him down, but it's just the clone. Swag has him having to back up as the real Shaco's coming, sliding on in. GP's got that ultimate from the Shen as he's going to be stand united with Armin, looking for somebody to taunt up, but he's got that fear from the box holding him in place. Neptune flashing forward, starting the ultimate away. We don't get to see the fight in the bot lane as the Thresh and Ash will kill each other. A lot of scuffling on this top side. Drake, two shot barrage from the Ezreal, dropping Braum incredibly low but hasn't been able to find the kill just yet and it seems like FSU Black have given up on grabbing this Rift Herald. Yeah, this Rift Herald is now looking like it's going to go the way of Glacial Galaxy. We've got three members here ready to try and try and take it out about half HP. It does look like Swaggasm and the Jodren are going to come up from this bot side though. Swaggasm is definitely in position to maybe take a steal. Yeah, and Armin's still around the corner as well. The Rift Herald's been reset. Swaggasm down to half health. Shaco stepping forward. He's been able to dash his way in. Nice cleaver from the Mundo. Slowing down Swaggasm. Jodran trying to play kind of defender. Taking and eating a couple of those cleavers to make sure that his Karthus gets out. But the Rift Herald was reset. So it still goes over to no one hanging out back in the pit yeah so you know fsu black will take their little victories where they can get them they don't lose the herald here and it's still available for either of the teams to collect what this likely means is that neither of the teams is going to get it and be able to use it before the plates fall it means that sort of 320 gold isn't going to be claimed as easily as you would expect when you've got the herald there two free plates are pretty much guaranteed and now, just returning back to these lane states, Morgana goes to the top side, Gangplank in the mid lane, and they're just continuing to farm up, and this gap in the top side is opening up more and more for ECS now for Neptune. She's going to base, though, has a lot of gold in her bank right now. Actually managed to pick up the completed Luden's Echo off of just a blasting one, so going to be with a big power spike right there. Means that she's going to be able to push those waves even faster. Yep, yeah, and uh, it's going to hurt a lot more as well when the actual team fights really start to begin. I like that Neptune wasn't too worried about trying to empower somebody onto the Black Shield, but instead saying, hey, I'll initiate the fight myself with my ultimate, forcing several of FSU members to flash to get out of the possibility of being rooted. So definitely uh, playing aggressively, and that's what you want to see if you're looking at Glacial Galaxy, because they are a little bit on a timetable. Yes, the Mundo stacks strongly to late game, but I would much rather have a late game Karthus, Shen, and Gangplank on my team than just the Mundo. Yeah, exactly. I'm right there with you that Glacial Galaxy really are on a clock here because the later state, the later that we go into this game, this Morgana really doesn't have the damage output to go for. And Odin China Crystal Arrow Fightbot 
Yep, Braum has been hooked up. He goes ahead and throws down that ultimate, but Shaco slipping around to the side. Two drop barrage from Ezreal, tearing through. The Karthus is dropping low. Swap grabs him in some trouble. Nihilators down to about 200 health. Aqua Domain will fall, though, as John Rand picks one up for the members of FSU Black. Pour one out for John Rand, grabbing himself a kill and immediately backing away, leaving his team to the rest of the members of Glacial Galaxy because he knows when a fight is lost. Yeah, and just as we talk about Glacial Galaxy being on the clock, they pull the trigger and extend it themselves. Gonna lightly pick themselves up this Mountain Drake here, they get three kills. Two of which go on to this Ezreal, who is gonna be, as I was about to mention, their key damage source, their pretty much only damage dealer in this game. Requiem comes down, doesn't find anything at all. So a wasted cooldown there from Swaggasm. He's gonna be really uh, upset with that one because they're such a key cooldown that you can use in team fights that wasting it like that Plus, you're on a really, really long cooldown. You know, at this point, it's three minutes long at rank one. And uh, that's three minutes of, re of, of released pressure that's going to be feeling good for Glacial Galaxy here. Right. They can take in a couple of skirmishes without worrying that, it, oh, if I get down to 200 health cards, this is ultimate will take me out. But uh, with that time, I don't think they're going to be too rushing with it because they already grabbed themselves that second Drake. They've got themselves a thousand gold lead. They're feeling pretty good overall. They just want to escalate this, speed this up. The game is dragging. We're at 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. This is basically half the game already over since most games go to that 30 minute mark. So the, they definitely need to put that gas down down and get this truck driving a little bit faster otherwise fsu might eventually just be able to outscale them top lane neptune solos out that turret the shen waiting for that black shield to drop tp coming in from the gangplank whoa armin Ooh. losing way too much health the ignite ticking down almost finishing off this shen he had to back away rather than stepping forward yeah true shot barrage available don't think he's going to be able to find the mark here yet just going to go a little bit wide unfortunately uh, but yeah, I, I like the point that you bring up, that FSU do outscale here, and that's, uh, I keep trying to bring up, but fights keep on happening, that Glacial Galaxy have a really strong damage source in Ezreal in the late game, but you don't want that. Oh, fighting again. Yep, they catch out Aqua Domain. Unfortunately, that Glacial Fissure not going to land, so instead they're going to turn to Flaring Fox. They find the stun. Viathan trying to do what he can with that Unbreakable, but not going to mean all that much. Backing away with 300 health. I'm Leap TPing in, so well worth it to get that TP, but they're still losing the Rift Herald going over to Glacial Galaxy on the top side. Yeah, two summoner spells burned there from the side of Glacial Galaxy as well as the teleport. So, you know, net gain really for FSU Black right there. They're able to pick themselves up. You know, both the utility summoner spells and the teleport from Leap all only for a heal themselves. And uh, all this, this is going to go bad. Yep, Sand United here from the Shen though. Might be able to do it. They've been able to lock down Leap. He's going to fall. They take down the Mundo, and I think they might have gotten a little bit of shutdown goal. Not quite yet. Drew Shop Barrage going to slide between the uprights of FSU Black, and it feels like they've got a little bit better coordinated plays these last couple of times that they've had a little bit of a scuffle, whereas Spatial Galaxy seem like they're kind of leaning more on the fact that they're already just a strong team, and they're playing very well in these lanes, so we're just going to kind of steamroll with that. Yeah, I'm Leap, unfortunately, there goes a little too far under the turret, forgetting about the Shen, unfortunately, and uh, thinking that maybe he was the Mundo from last game where he had this insane power curve that he was super strong and super far ahead. Unfortunately, he had to, or did end up building Spirit Vicious, so he doesn't really have too much armor to speak of. Trying to dive a turret like that is uh, very difficult for him, as you saw right there, just does fall with the Shen ulti coming through as well. Keep in mind as well, Jodbrand has been able to finish off that Trinity Force. He hasn't even finished off the Tier 1 boots, but he's got a major, major item for the split push and for the 1v1 if he ends up fighting. Good sidestep from Flaring Fox to avoid the Crystal Arrow, but he's still been slowed down. One more auto attack will lock him up. The exhaust coming down as well, forcing the flash out, but the Karthus ultimate gives one to Swaggasm. FSU fans, cheer it up because we are now tied up in kills. Very close to tied up in gold between the two teams as FSU you black has been able to slip their way bit by bit to catch back up yep and they really are getting themselves into a position that they can win this game despite this gold deficit i still feel like uh that the game should go in their favor the shaco unfortunately hasn't had the impact that we want it to it's been great at securing neutral objectives but hasn't really been too great at securing the kills nice turret going down in the favor of glacial galaxy so giving themselves a little bit of gold back themselves but talk about it some more that the Shaco needs to 
make his presence felt really <laughs> soon because it's, it, it, it's not not happening at the moment. And <sighs> well, he I feel did, like this game is much... slowly slipping. Yeah, she didn't do too much pressure onto Spygasm's Karthus, so there wasn't really any assassinations there. And then, really, okay, great focus on stealing away a Drake, grabbing the other Drake, getting the Rift Heralds. Those are all good things, but it's been still very, very slow. Flying Fox probably caught out again. I've felt that pain as a Thresh many times before. True Shock for Barrage from Ezreal actually really hurting those carries from FSU Black, but another pick going the way of FSU. Yeah, and these... These chunked HP bars might actually be pretty pivotal coming up for this impending Drake fight. That True Shot Barrage might actually mean a lot more than we thought. Oh! Misclick! Finally does it! Is able to jump over the wall, assassinates the Ash Annihilator, will fall. Viathan using a nice uh, stand behind me to escape to the Karthus. However, I think he's going to be in trouble. Shift comes through for Misclick, picking up another one. But the Karthus is here, has the uh, Shen coming in with the Sand United as well. Should be able to protect him, but it's only the Shaco clone. Swagasm's in trouble. A Shiv comes out, Misclick will go down as the Jod ran, chasing in onto Neptune but with the cleaver coming through from the uh, Mundo, decides to back away and play it safe around the turret. And uh, I think we need to report Glacial Galaxy for stream sniping because as soon as we say Misclick needs to do something, boy <laughs> does she do so. Three kills immediately coming through for her. You know, just really coming up huge here. Likely going to be able to pick up this Infernal Drake as well. This will take them to Infernal Soul. And, you know, I'm maybe I'm just, uh, just asking too much of these players that they're... You know, they know exactly what they need to do, and they're playing perfectly around these objectives. The three kills that she got right there are probably the three most important kills in the last 10 minutes because it secured themselves the Drake. So, you know, props to Misclicked, props to Glacial Galaxy because they are doing incredibly well. And the uh, they got themselves mid lane turret after dropping the second Rift Herald. Uh, Herald, you know, it was really a nicely done play from Glacial Galaxy across the board. They've got one Drake away from Dragon Soul, and it's an Infernal Drake to get that extra stacking damage on top of it. And I know that we needed to the Shaco to scale a little bit in that early game, but man, misclicks, misclicks timing on those last couple of spells in the fight worked out super well and especially pairing that with the true shop rush from Ezreal that went across those carries just worked out uh, unanimously for Glacial Galaxy. Yeah, really did work out a treat. The True Shot Barrage setting up perfectly for Misclick to get in, get those assassinations, pick off the lower HP targets in the back line and now Nihilator still has Flash and Heal available so the assassinations won't be as easy as last time. Has picked up the Execution is calling as well, so now the any heal coming through from Aqua Domain is going to be slightly reduced, and obviously I'm Leap with the Masochism going to be severely reduced in his power that he has. You know that's going to pretty much half all of the healing coming through from him, and a oh, whiffed enchanted crystal arrow. Miss Clicks just going to walk out of that one fairly easily. Yep, uh, that's what's really, really hard for the side of FSU Black is to find these picks. And they have been able to find a couple of them. That's where they started to get back into the game. They're evening up the game in gold. And it feel, felt like they had a little bit of pressure on that bottom side river. But unfortunately, with that big fight going the way of Glacial Galaxy and the Drake going down over as well, it felt like all the work of the last three kills that FSU Black had had kind of just got destroyed in one fell swoop. So now they have to go back to the drawing board, start it all over again start to find those picks and it's going to be much more difficult without these exterior uh third tier turrets as they might start some pressure onto the second tier turret in the mid lane viathan has the stamp behind me from the shen coming through but it's Get just defensive Ooh. karthus going down the damage from this ap morgana is enough for the tormented soil to finish him off yeah that's uh, that's that's just a, a miscalculation the misclicks might go for a dive here though looking to posture under this turret yeah, and uh, look at the poke coming out from Glacier Galaxy, right? They're saying, hey, we're not even gonna worry about fighting you. We're just gonna poke you down. Let the Shaco do the work. They're gonna take down the Brom as well. Thresh steals away. Flaring Fox probably gonna escape from that turret shot as well. So now the second tier turret going to fall. It's six members from Glacier Galaxy because he got the clone from Shaco as well. I'm Leap jumping and join his team here in that mid lane as they push onto this Nexus, or Inhibitor, excuse me, not Nexus quite yet, Inhibitor turret, they decided to back away. Still more objectives for them to grab as the fourth Drake coming up in two minutes. Baron's still alive on the table, so they go ahead and grab themselves from Vision before recalling with their newly found gold. 
yeah, nice turret trade on the top side from Armin on this Shen. Managing to find a little bit of gold back for the side of uh, FSU Garnet, but overall, really impressed by the proactive play. You know, it's taken them 20 minutes or so, it's taking them getting the items that they needed, but Glacial Galaxy have now turned on, turned themselves toward the objectives and with, as you mentioned, about two minutes, a minute and a half now remaining on this Infernal Drake. This is going to be a deciding fight, really, because I think if Glacial Galaxy get this Infernal Soul, they'll be able to snowball the game out and win with a Baron take, maybe just a win one team fight. But if FSU Black manage to win this team fight, I think it's going to sway the entire game back in their favor because they're going to have claimed the shutdown on Misclick, who's currently sitting on 700 gold for the kill. We've got kills coming through they'll be able to shut down the Morgana as well get a lot of gold back in their pocket and completely change the tempo of this game so this this upcoming Drake fight for me decides the game well and you also have things like the executioner's calling that is now on the gangplank so he's going to be able to cut through that mundo healing the zanyas from the Karthus, so he's not going to be able to be assassinated nearly as quickly by that shako so there's a lot coming through for fsu black in terms of items that will help them out greatly in this next fight but i really do have to feel like they need to play it as a grouped team don't look for any of these small skirmishes and small scuffles because the enemy team has a shako the enemy team has the high mobility of the Ezreal that's really hard to lock down you really want to go instead for one of these bigger fights around a neutral objective where you can use your group's strength AoE of the Karthus and the auto attacks from the Ash to actually win that fight as Armin might be in trouble in this bottom lane the Mundo's still throwing out those cleavers they flayed the Shen back in but he's gonna have the flash to jump over the wall will not have it for a flash taunt engage and FSU Black is actually stepping forward aggressively in the bottom lane yeah, looks like a big fight might be about to erupt. Obviously, this Infernal Drake is live, and both teams want to take it. Flaming Fox going forward. Yep, and they're going to engage on to Viathan. Swagasm already taken down to half health there. They both go golden. Stopwatch there for a moment. Nihilator throwing out that ultimate. Trying to lock down Neptune. The exhaust slowing her down. So it's been at least a trade. One for two so far. But Swagasm will fall as well. Has the ultimate available. Needs to use it right now. Misclick should drop. The clone going to drop as well. Aqua Domain should be in trouble. The Jodran is here. Throwing out those barrels. Explosions. Flash is looking for this Ezreal. Can they get it? The flash from Ezreal. The auto attack. Oh, Gameplank goes but down. But it's a trade over as Nihilator picks it up i'm leap just walks in this ash makes it a near double ace only the mundo lives for glacial galaxy and he's going to be able to take this infernal soul as well jake that's going to go the way of glacial galaxy the huge team fight the determining factor for me in this game goes the way of glacial galaxy they're now set up to start to take some incredibly one-sided team fights with this Infernal Soul, presuming it goes the way of them, obviously, Viathan, don't think he's going to be in position to oh. steal this away. I the HP of Leap. Yeah, he was so close to getting executed. I actually was just sitting there watching him going, two more auto attacks, one more auto attack, but no, the healing comes through just in time for I'm Leap, and he will survive. It is the Infernal Soul to Glacial Galaxy. FSU Black find themselves down 4,000 gold. They did get the shutdown on misclick and it went the way of Karthus so that will definitely be nice to add damage into his inventory but instead he builds a uh, Banshee's Veil to try to help with survivability which is not exactly what you want. No I feel like this Banshee's Veil probably could have been something more impactful obviously the Banshee's Veil is going to help you out versus the likes of the Morgana and the Thresh pick that they do have but dying on Karthus at the end of the day is probably one of the the more Accepting champions to die on as Flying Fox is just going to walk himself out, not going to get the full application of Grom passive coming through. Concussive Blow is not able to find their mark entirely, but I like this from FSU Black here. Not letting them clear the control where they have enough over the wall damage to mean that they can take or can aggro the Baron, make it difficult for Flaring Fox and like of Golden, oh, Golden Guardians, Gla Glacial Galaxy to take out the wards. GG, GG, I mean, it's all the same, a lot of GGs coming through, but yeah, exactly right is you, you poke the Baron to give the, let the Baron do some free poke onto the enemy team as they're inside that pit. Unfortunately, they got poked themselves super hard between the Morgana and the Ezreal True Shot Barrage, which means they are going to have to back away from that. They don't have any vision on the Baron, but at least Glacial Galaxy walking forward to clear some vision says that there is some time for FSU Black to recall, heal back up, grab whatever items they can, get back out 
onto Summoner's Rift and try to stop this Baron going the way of the Glacial Galaxy because if they get the Soul and that Baron, it should be game over. Yeah, and they're just going to rush it down here. They forced the, the recalls from FSU Black and FSU Black aren't in a position. They didn't have the vision. The Hawkshot did spot them out, but it looks like it's just going to go the way. Oh, big fight could erupt here for... FSU. Yeah, Jordan is in, dropping that ultimate. The Baron is going to Glacial Galaxy, but their members are already very low. Swag has been forcing Miss Click to hop over the back of the wall. They're looking for Aqua Domain as well. Three members still have the Baron for Glacial Galaxy, but it was two more kills the way of FSU Black, and they have been able to at least slow down some of that Baron push. Yeah, I mean, I, if I'm Glacial Galaxy there, I'm calling hashtag worth two members falling, one of which was your support and the other being your mid laner, you know. Morgana's not going to be finding herself in a side lane trying to split push, so I'm more than happy to take that trade itself. And this turret going to fall here and could be a fight between Armin and Leap. Yeah, uh, is that a fight though when Leap just walks through, takes the Shen and that turret? I mean, he really just didn't even care. It's just I do so much AoE damage just with my presence alone. Uh, I just walk you down and, and take that, so... Uh, yeah, let's... misclick Go ahead. found a pick in the mid lane as well. Annihilator actually fell with heal available. The combined damage between Aqua Domain and Misclicked was enough to take down Annihilator. Through we didn't even use the heal, and I'm Leap is kind of unstoppable down here. We'll see what Viathan can do even to slow the progression of Lee pushing forward. He's waiting for that next wave to give them that Embarer Empowerment and push into this next inhibitor, which is the first inhibitor they should be able to claim as they also start to siege this uh, inhibitor turret in the mid lane. And it's feeling very reminiscent of the last game. Yeah, it really is. This inhibitor is likely to fall here and the Jodran just about gets away. The minions are going to take down this inhibitor. These cleavers coming through. He's essentially one versus three in right now inside the base. That's one inhibitor down. Inhibitor number two under siege right now. Aqua Domain going to leave the cannon minions to do their dirty work right here. Two inhibs down and now got Glacial Galaxy. They're looking to maybe posture a little bit a little bit more aggressively towards these Nexus turrets. It's going to have four cannon minions beating on this turret. It's not six cannon minions, but it might be enough to spell the end of the game as Nihilator has dropped terribly low, has to go back to the Fountain to heal once again. And we're getting a little bit of deja vu as Glacial Galaxy did exactly this in game number two. FSU Black, they've got a fight in them. They're hoping to do something. The stand behind me, Sandy United, excuse me, from the Shen coming through. Karthus goes golden. He's surviving for a moment longer, but ends up still going down. Flaring Fox will fall. The Karthus ultimate comes down, but I think it's just too late. Even with misclick falling, it's not going to be enough. Just kidding. It was only a misclick's clone that went down. Everyone else is still alive. Armin sitting on the Nexus, watching it go the way of Glacial Galaxy. We were hoping for a little bit more fight out of FSU Black, but Glacial Galaxy proved just far, far, far too much and will be your July Invitational Champions. I mean, it was a really good series of games. Last game into this game, they just looked so unbelievably clean. They really did, and I talked about it in the draft. We talked about it throughout the game. Misclicked on this Shaco, needed to perform if the team was going to win. And what did she do? Stepped up huge, found numerous picks that led them to objectives, and put the team on her back, got the win, and that takes them the tournament. Yeah, it's just so beautiful to see. And one of the things that I wanted to mention from last game into this game, we'll only spend a moment before we throw it to the analyst desk to kind of wrap up and do a little bit more analysis than even we can do, is that uh, a big factor in last game and this game is how much Glacial Galaxy played around objectives. Even the chat was commenting in game number two how it was more like an LCK game with almost no kills until the 15 minute mark when we had our finally first blood. And even then, the kills were incredibly minimalistic because Glacial Galaxy were more focused on grabbing turrets, grabbing J drakes, grabbing rift heralds, and so their ability to move around the map and take objectives, even when fights seemed to be going the way of the enemy team, was just amazing macro play to watch. Yeah, I 100% agree that this Glacial Galaxy team, despite this, you know, being lightweight, uh, the, the light invitational, was definitely some really impressive plays, and ultimately, you know, we can't be surprised when they win the tournament that the, the, we see some impressive players coming out from them, but just understanding the game on a macro level as well as the micro level always impresses me as a caster.
Yep, it's beautiful stuff to watch and definitely well-deserving Glacial Galaxy. Congratulations on their win. For now, we're going to go ahead and toss it back to the analyst desk for uh, taking up this game and talking about it, analyzing, breaking down just exactly how Glacial Galaxy were able to win this game. Ivar and Simulcrum, welcome back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to the analyst desk. Um, great game. First off, congratulations to Glacial Galaxy here. Uh, super well played from their whole team. Um, I think we want to touch on the jungle matchup just a little bit, right, Sim? Yeah, the this game is really the tale of the jungle matchup. And Misclicked, the casters already mentioned it, how critical Misclicked was to Glacial Galaxy's comp. And the Shaco managed to find so much impact. And I think the key thing to highlight between Ga Glacial Galaxy's comp and FSU Black's comp is that FSU has no backline access. There is no way for them to approach the Ezreal unless Aqua is so gracious as to Arcane ships forward. Which, to be fair, he did a fair bit, but it didn't matter because Glacial Galaxy was converting objectives with their fights and Misclicked was threatening the backline so well throughout the game. Yeah, and like you said, it was able. they were able to snowball Aqua domain a little bit and uh, the Ezreal played very aggro on the on the pick, like eating forward quite frequently, but was rewarded for it. So definitely confident on, on that champion. Um, I also want to touch on like I think Jake mentioned it towards the uh, end of the post game talk. Uh, all the objectives were going towards the favor of Glacier Galaxy. Whether there was a team fight or a small skirmish, uh, they would pick up a dragon or a tower, and it got to the point where Glacier Galaxy had all the dragons and they were up. 4-1 to one in towers, and their goal lead was just uh, pretty much amounted just just from that. Yeah, you're exactly right. The, it's easy to fall into the trap of you're seeing the enemy team pulling ahead. They have kills, they have objectives, and thinking, I need to get a kill, I need to, I need to do something on the map. But if you're not converting those kills into meaningful gains, like turrets and drakes, uh, you're, you're going to slowly get outscaled, and that's what happened in this game. FSU Black. They couldn't convert, and it's really the synergy and the communication that Glacial Galaxy had, which is what let them win. They mm -hmm. were on the same page, they set up the objectives in advance, they knew what they wanted going into fights. Uh, a conversation within a game between a team should never be about, can we fight here? It, the conversation should continue and end with, what can we get after this fight? What can we get by taking a fight here? And it's clear from this game and how it went that Glacial Galaxy understood that better than FSU. Yeah, and uh, and that's why they won. And so once again, uh, before we pass it back to uh, Jake, uh, congratulations to Glacial Galaxy. Thank you so much for Jake for allowing me and Sam Malcolm to come on to the analyst desk. It's been super mm -hmm. fun. And uh, you can just take it away, Jake. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. It was fantastic and a fun night, an incredible night for our Invitational Series. It was really, really cool to see all the teams coming out. Bar Esports dropping game one was definitely a surprise. Glacial Galaxy and FSU Black making it to finals was not, but both teams battled it out super hard. And in the end, it is proven that at least the month of July, Glacial Galaxy is the best team the Excellency Lightweight has to offer. We've got game one, a week one, excuse me, starting up for our August series next week. So if you are a team similar to this, come back next Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we will start the whole thing all over again. Week one begins. Any team can join, build up points, get that rep, and make their way into next uh, month's uh, Invitational Tournament. We thank everyone for coming out. There were so many people that were following. It's going to be hard for me to go through everyone. So let me just say a massive thank you to all the followers for coming out and supporting. But a huge shout out specifically to Alicia for those 10 subs gifted to the community tonight. That is insane. Huge support coming out from the Glacial squad, cheering their players on, cheering their teams on. Absolutely love it. Thank you all so much 